Pacific Raceways, our second ICSCC race weekend of the year. Pro 3 accounted for 28 of the 40 cars in Group 1, 16 of 30 in Group 5, 9 of 16 in the Enduro, and 53 of 114 total entries. Lots of spectators, too, thanks to Carl Noakes and Coley Tipton, who invited the popular Avance Car Club with a car corral, the debut of Coley's new Avance livery, and a 100-car parade lap. What a way to celebrate my birthday. Old Laguna buddy Bill Ecker stops by to hook up my helmet blower. Thanks, Billy. Well, you know, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, Bill. You bet, man. Have fun. Huh? Uh, I should probably pull the pin out of your fire bottle. Yeah. How embarrassing. Good thing Bill hooked up my helmet blower. They held us in free grid an extra 10 minutes. Feel the power of Rhoda's Mark Lovett engine? It makes the ground shake. Or is that just my GoPro? Boy, they don't miss a thing. My son Jamie came out to the track for my birthday. I put him to work on turn four as we were really short-handed. Least I can do is wave at him. Saturday qualifying. We've only got time for four hot laps. Maybe if I wave enough, he'll come racing with me again. He quit once he got engaged. Now he has a daughter and a son to keep him busy. Love the grandkids, but sure miss my racing buddy. Second lap, and there goes Wes Hill. No, it's Wes's renter, Sean Hester. Pretty fast renter. Sean qualified ninth of 31 with a 136.7. I was 17th with a 138.6, 6 tenths off my best. Brian Berkovitz got pole with a 135.1. Then Coley Tipton, Corey Peters, Matt Lowell, Jeff McCaffer, and Sean Northrup, all under 136. We did have casualties. Scott Studeris went off right at six and overcorrected, putting it into the burn. And Dave Weller got stuck in the ditch. Maybe a bit too much throttle? Hey, Jim. Yeah? Go when I go. Jim, 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 Jim,
Yes, a non-points race, said the guru. So what'd you guys do with my car? It was in one piece when I left last night. Oh, we partied hard. <laughs> God, yes, so. Oh, you missed out, man. That was fun. Were you wearing the rubber party pants? <laughs> the full suit. Now a little diversion before we move up the Pro 3 grid. Here's Brad the Jedi Rabbit Greco. Not sure if Brad didn't get the qualifier or just chose to start from the back of the pack, but he plows through five Pro 3 cars before turn one. That's me two cars ahead, but not for long. He passes another five before turn three. Another six before the king. Lap two, Brad catches up to the front of the Pro 3 grid. Daniel Hovington won't let him by without a fight. There goes Jeff McCaffrey and former champ Sean Northrup. Lap three, Matt Lowell goes down pretty easy. Corey Peters, not so much. Brad retakes Matt, but for some reason hesitates going around Corey. What a move on current champ Brian Berkowitz. Lap four, just Cody Tipton to go. Pretty big skid marks on the left, and all this dirt on the track. Ah, Sissel, what an idiot. Despite the diversion, in a bit over three laps, Brad takes out the entire Pro 3 field. Only a Jedi can do this. Sunday, Brad battles with Andrew Newell in his BMW Spec E46. Let's just watch. I watched the whole thing from turn eight in real time, and it was awesome. Brad Greco and Andrew Newell, two of the best in the Northwest, proving that even Jedis get emotional. Moving up the Pro 3 food chain, second year driver Scott Thompson is picking up speed in a hurry. In Sunday's Group 5 race, he battles number 78 Will Kellogg and 67 Bruce Matari. Will and Bruce pass Scott in lap two, but with less than three laps to go, Bruce must have missed a shift, and Scott repasses to finish second in EIP and seventh among all the Pro 3 cars. This kid's got some speed, and a really cool Ayrton Senna tribute livery. Dave Weller qualified 12th on Saturday, but in Saturday's race, he falls behind Chuck Hurley and Josh Boyd. On lap four, Dave has a great battle with Nick Harbaugh. Until Nick finally pulls away. On lap six, Nick bobbles and Dave gets by, but not for long. Before lap seven, Dave gets by Nick for good and will finish 12th, right where he started. After the race, Dave tells my wife what happened to me, which must have been very soothing. So where's Jim? He is in turn two on the inside. What? The car seems okay, maybe a little bit right front suspension, but he's on the inside of the turn. So he's okay, he must have had a spin out or contact or something. In Sunday's qualifying, trying to keep up with Coley, Dave overcooks at exiting 3A, can't catch it, and ends up stuck in the ditch. Later, he discovers a broken rocker and can't race Sunday. Sure hope his bad luck hasn't come back to haunt him. We kid Nick Carbaugh about being cheap, but he's young, is our new Pro 3 line co-author, has a great sounding engine, and does most of his own mechanical work. Though that often doesn't serve him well, he almost always has a great start. Here's his first lap from Saturday's race. 
Check out that gutsy move outside on Colton Edwards in that number 53 SPM. He soon passes Robert Coneybeer and even hangs with Dave Weller. Lap two, still hanging with Weller and Josh Voigt. Lap three, he gets by Weller. What's the world coming to? Lap six, he passes me like I'm standing still. Of course, I am standing still, off in the infield. End of lap eight, Weller catches him back. Nick finishes a respectable 13th of 28 with a fast lap of 137.6, a second faster than me. Plus, he finished. Sunday, Nick has another great start. He passes Will Keller, then Lee Storgar. He hounds Weller until he gets by. Then Andrew Mitchell in the old Watson car, and Bruce Humberstone, who's off-roading out on the right. Next, he passes Robert Coneybeer with a bold move between 5A and B. He shadows Colton Edwards for two laps, then blows by with the same move he used on Coneybeer. Five laps later, the E46's superior power overtakes Nick after the front straight. Then it's Coley into the berm, and it's all over until the restart. Former Pro 3 driver Greg Miller was working turn five when Coley went off. Yeah, he got up there pretty far. After the restart, Nick continues to pull on the field. He stays right behind Josh Boyd and Bruce Humberstone and finishes 12th. Then he voluntarily disqualifies himself because he's underweight. That's our Nick. Newcomer Scott Eckert finished fourth in the first points race of the season at PIR. At Pacific on Saturday, he qualified seventh with a 136.4. In Saturday's race, watch this battle with Daniel Huffington. Greco gets squeezed off by Corey Peters, and Jeff McCaffrey follows. Right on Danielle's heels, Scott gets a love tap from Chuck Hurley. Not sure if Chuck was being nice and let Scott save his position, or Scott just outgunned him. Either way, after the restart, Scott, Chuck, and Jeff battle to the very end, finishing 6th, 7th, and 8th. Scott seems fairly happy. On Sunday, Scott qualifies fourth with a 135.4 with just Corey, Chuck, and Matt in front. Sean Northrup is on Scott's bumper by turn two. And Jeff McCaffrey sticks his nose in at turn three, but Scott holds them both off. At the end of lap one, Scott slides by Corey. But as you can see in the mirror, the battle is hardly over. Jeff McCaffrey is right on his tail as well. Jeff stays on Scott's bumper for two more laps, right on his bumper. Then Coley joins in. Lap six, Coley gets by, and Jeff is all over Scott. Next lap, Coley, pushing hard, goes into the burn and is out of the race. Trying to avoid following Coley, Scott scrubs off too much speed, and Jeff McCaffrey flies by on the outside. Just that one lift, and now Scott has Corey, Sean Northrup, and Brian all over him. Finally, Corey slides by, just before the full course yellow. Scott makes a great move on the restart and gets by Corey. He's pulling on Jeff McCaffrey until Jeff almost squeezes him off at the wall. Now, Corey is all over, and Sean Northrup edges by inside. Brian tries inside, and Scott and Matthew King almost collide. Neither Scott nor Brian will stand down, and Brian makes a great move inside at 5A. But exiting six, Brian gets held up by Phil Oliva on the outside, and Scott repasses. Three laps later, Corey is back on Scott's tail, and that's where he'll stay to the finish. Just watch the mirror. Behind Matt, Jeff, Chuck, and Sean, Scott finishes fifth. He seems rather pleased. Daniel Huffington qualified eighth on Saturday, tenth on Sunday, right behind her husband and current champ, Brian Berkowitz. 
Exiting 3B, she passes it. Lap 2, Ryan repasses. Danielle sticks on Brian's tail for five more laps until Coley overcooks it and tries to jump the burn. This brings out the full course yellow until he can be extracted. On the restart, Danielle is right in the thick of things with all the fast guys. As Brian battles Scott Eckert and is held up by Phil Oliva, she slips by. This lady can drive. Lap six, chasing Scott Eckert, she overcooks it and Corey gets by. But Danielle doesn't give up easy. Two laps later, Brian repasses. Wonder what that hand signal is. Danielle finishes eighth, right behind Brian, taking friends between checkered and green to a whole new level. Now let's see Brian Berkovitz's side of the story. He qualified seventh, just ahead of Cole. It's a hard-fought battle, but by turn two, both Coley and Sean Northrup get by. Then Danielle squeezes by inside. There is going to be hell to pay tonight. At the end of lap two, Brian repasses. But as you can see in the mirror, Danielle does not give up. As Matt Lowell pulls away from the herd, for three laps, the other top nine cars battle it out tooth and nail. Until this happens. On restart, the battle continues unabated. Taking the outside at 3A, Brian starts to pull away from Scott Ecker. But Scott doesn't go down easy. And when Brian gets stuck behind Phil Oliva going through six, Scott makes his move. So does Danielle. No hard feelings, right? Try as he might, Brian can't get by his wife. Then he loses a place to his stablemate, Corey. Finally, after two more laps, Brian passes Danielle. That's gonna cost him. Brian gets close to Corey and Scott, but can only finish seventh, just ahead of Danielle. Tonight, he'll have to deal with that. You passed me twice, how dare you? <laughs> Corey Peters finished second in the championship in 2018, third in 2019. He's gridded third Saturday. Coley and Brian are in front, Matt Lowell on the right. But what's on Matt's roof? Radio antenna? GoPro mount? Maybe something to fend off birds after his goose encounter at PIR last race. You want bumper-to-bumper -bumper racing? Here's your bumper-to-bumper, -bumper, front and back. Lap two, Corey pulls away from Matt. Not sure why he's giving a point by to Stuart Quam off track right. Lap three, here comes Brad Greco. That was close. Here comes Brad again. Hope Corey gives him a little more room. No hand gestures, no hard feelings, I guess. Who threw all the dirt on the track? Oh, it was me. Brian pulls ahead outside, then swings back inside. Corey shakes his head and gestures. Not sure if that was for Brian or me. I I'll go with Brian. Matt charges up inside. Then either Matt, Corey, or both lock up. Things seem to be getting dicey. Two laps later, everyone's in the same place. But things seem a bit more under control. Fun to watch Matt in the mirror as he drifts through the corners. Unless you're Corey. 
Madison McCulloch bought the old hammer car, and Corey acknowledges his presence. It ends just like it started, bumper to bumper. Make that three wide, and another hand gesture. Sunday's race, Corey is again gridded third behind Matt and Chuck Hurley. Corey stays right there almost the entire first lap. Until he overcooks it a bit. That gives Scott enough momentum to overtake Corey. And what a battle ensues. Two great young drivers at the limit. Then Jeff McCaffrey makes a move. You think Coley was trying to help Corey with that love tap? This begins one of the most exciting races I've ever seen. Jeff, Scott, and Corey with Coley right behind. In the rear camera, watch Coley's chassis hop when he hits the curbing. That there is foreshadowing. Okay, I'll shut up and let you watch. After Coley parks it, it takes two more laps before the full course yellow comes out. On the restart, Scott Eckert slips by on the inside and Sean Northrup on the outside. Then Brian passes inside. Scott almost collides with Matthew King. And Danielle gets by on the left. Corey takes a flyer on the outside to avoid being held up by Phil Oliva. That at least keeps Corey in the game. It's so much easier at the back. Next lap, Corey passes Brian as he battles Danielle. It's never pretty when spouses fight. Three laps later, Corey runs down Danielle as she tries to gain on Scott and Sean, and Brian's right behind. Next lap, Corey targets Scott and hounds him for an entire lap. can't make the kill. And that's how it ends. Corey fourth, Scott third. 
Now we're riding with Matt Lowell in Saturday's race. Top qualifiers were Brian, Coley, Corey, Matt, Jeff, and Sean. Matt battles for the front, but Corey holds him off while Sean threatens on the right. Then a nose-to-tail dogfight ensues. Finally, by turn nine, Sean begins to fall back. This battle goes on till the end. In the last lap, Coley stretched out his lead a bit, but Matt, Corey, and Brian battle right down to the wire. There's only a tenth of a second separated the three of us at the finish line. At the end? Yep. Oh, not a tenth a lap. At the end, the entire end. race. Yeah. Holy. Coley was only one second ahead of that. Gee, if I'd had 50 more yards, I'd have gone from fourth to second. He may have been bench racing, but he wasn't lying. Sunday, Matt's on pole with a 134.9, nearly a half second ahead of Chuck and Corey. With no Pro 3 cars out in front, this is kind of boring, so let's watch the rest of the race to the rear. That's better. Look at all those pesky BMW E30s. By day two, we're down from 28 to 19 Pro 3 cars. Still, it's a bunch of them. Chuck tries inside, but Matt holds him off. Chuck tries outside at 3A, which puts him inside at 3B. But Matt continues to stretch his lead throughout the entire first lap. Lap two, Chuck makes another charge at 3A, this time to the inside. But again, Matt stays smooth and continues to pull away. While the rest of the pack continues to fall back, every lap Chuck keeps charging to no avail. Lap three, Chuck makes an unexpected charge through five and hangs with Matt all the way through eight, but the end result is the same. Lap four, the pack has fallen way back and Chuck's charges keep getting weaker. By lap five, the charges have become ineffectual. If Matt doesn't make a mistake, it appears to be all over. Matt doesn't make a mistake, but Coley does, which means a restart. Now they're all bunched up again, and Chuck is back in full charge mode. Where are the ketchup packs when you need them? As more stragglers get involved, it gets really interesting, but it doesn't phase Matt, and this is as close as anyone gets. Until three laps later, when Jeff McCaffrey gets by Chuck and makes a charge. Yet again, Matt easily pulls away. Next lap, Jeff keeps trying, and Chuck is still hanging in there. Last lap, the fat lady is about to sing after these tips for Matt to newcomer Guy Berry. I don't, I'm not good with that technology shit. <laughs> don't let him kid you. <laughs> Matt takes his second championship race in a row, giving him 50 points, nine ahead of Jeff and Corey. Working corners, Eddie Whitman called Matt a racing god. Why do the gods and mortals race? Well, it's exciting, but mostly it's fun. Awesome race, Jeff. Yeah. You're whooping my ass, but man. <laughs> That's why I couldn't get it. Come on. Yeah, it. Yeah. Did you get it? I just love hanging out with the people, parking next to Coley, the fast guy, to see if I could steal some speed secrets from him. And, did you uh, Did you find time. it creepy at all that he had his arm on your shoulder for like 10 seconds before yeah, he getting, awkwardly... He's getting with, sweaty. With... <laughs> oh, you are <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> did you ever run over somebody backing up and get him caught in your wheel? Oh yeah, but I just power circle over. <laughs> Up on the road. Come on, man, you could at least like let me fix my hair. <laughs> what do you, you, think, you really think Some that's going to improve that. anything? Totally. And notice, we always stay hydrated. Come join us. See you June 19th at PIR.